Okay. Chairwoman Hank. Um, good morning, and I'd like to start by saying I accept the committee's amendments. Um, AB 1708 will create a minimum, minimum penalty for purchasers of sex, 72 hours in county jail and a fine, which would help fund services for victims of trafficking. Across our nation and here in California, we often talk about trafficked victims, and we've, we've really acknowledged that this, in fact, um, the purchase of sex is not a victimless crime. And yet, as we talk about that, and we often talk about the traffickers, we so seldom talk about why there is such a increase in demand um, and, and an increase in supply because of the increase in demand. Unfortunately, we have a society for too long who have pushed away kind of this idea that there's something normal or victimless about purchasing sex. And so often the Johns are the least likely to bear any kind of real responsibility for participating in what is in fact a crime. In fact, um, they're often just given a ticket. Their uh, significant other, spouse or family knows nothing of this. They're, they're not forced to go to court. They're not um, required to, to do much of anything. And yet uh, we wonder why there is a additional increase and increase and increase in the demand for purchased sex. AB 1708 would help tackle the problem of commercial sexual exploitation by taking a hard stance against those contributing to the demand for sex trafficking. AB 1708's consistent and consequential penalties for purchasers sends a strong message that we as a society are not okayed with continued sexual exploitation of our youth and are willing to actually do something for it. We of course will be taking an amendment which will strike the one year sentence enhancement for trafficking near a school from the bill and establish the minimum fine for purchasing sex for an adult at $250 rather than $1,000. It would keep it at $1,000 for a uh, uh, underage victim. Um, amends taken going out of committee will also clarify these subdivisions do not preclude prosecution under the provision of this law. With me today, I have um, Summer Stefan, who is the chair of the San Diego Regional Commercial Sexual Exploitation of Children and Trafficking Advisory Council. She's here um, in, in case somebody has technical questions. And I have Candace, a survivor of sex trafficking from the nonprofit Magdalene Hope. And I hope we'll hear her story. Thank you. I would note that with the amendments that were taken, there's support on both sides. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Hello, my name is Candace Shepard. Um, I'm from Ridgecrest, California, and I'm also with PATH, the People for Abolishment of Trafficking Humans. Um, I'm a survivor of human trafficking. I was trafficked from Reno, Nevada to San Jose. I escaped my trafficker by jumping out of a two-story building into San Jose. I believe that if there are stricter laws on Johns, it would cut down the demand for women. Women working the streets are still human beings, and most, not all, are victims who are being forced to do what they are doing. Men who are buying victims of human trafficking should be held accountable for, what their, act for their actions. No woman wakes up one day and decides to be a prostitute, and they shouldn't be treated as such. I believe this bill will cut down the supply and demand of buying women. People who drink and drive face harsh punishments, as they should. The same should apply when it comes to purchasing human beings. The fines the men will have to pay can help victims who are trying to rebuild their life or who are single mothers as myself. I'm asking you, the committee, for an I vote on AB 1708. Thank you, and thank you very much for having the courage and the willingness to be here and share your story with us. Uh, are there others in support of the bill? Madam Chair, members, Randy Perry on behalf of PORAC in support of the bill. Sean Hoffman with the California District Attorneys Association in support. Michelle Tumashaw representing Alameda County District Attorney Nancy O'Malley in strong support. Alberto Tariqua on behalf of State Coalition Probation Organization in support. My name is Doug Bennett. I'm the founder of Magdalene Hope and People for the Abolishment of Trafficking Humans. I rescued Candace last year and I work with survivors every day and I ask for an I vote for AB 1708. Thank you. I'm Angela Gia Bennett. I am a public school teacher and I am a human trafficking survivor mentor and I would strongly appreciate your um, vote. Yes. Pastor Al Jones from uh, Magdalen Hope Ministries that uh, rescues uh, human trafficking victims and ask for an I vote on this bill. Thank you. Uh, Senator Anderson. Well, after the opposition, I have a question. Okay. Um, speakers in opposition to the bill. Okay. 
<laughs> Please, everybody, we've got like 30 more bills. <laughs> <laughs> right, thanks. Apologies. Good morning, Micah Doctoroff on behalf of the ACLU of California. Um, we appreciate the Assemblywoman's amendments and they address some of our concerns. We still have um, a, a handful of remaining concerns. Namely, we believe that imposing a mandatory period of incarceration for the offense of solicitation is not a wise use of public safety resources. Mandating jail time for low level nonviolent conduct that involves no actual sexual activity is counterproductive to the goal of rehabilitation and limits the ability to use scarce jail space for more serious crimes with offenders with longer sentences. Um, secondly, we believe that it is inappropriate to expand the punishment for the offense of soliciting a minor to include soliciting someone uh, posing as a minor. Um, for these reasons, we respectfully oppose the bill but share the goal of protecting minors from victimization. Thank you. Cleve Fossegai with the California Public Defenders Association. I'll just associate my comments with those of my colleague at the ACLU. We're also in opposition. Okay. The bill has been moved. Senator Anderson. I, I just had a question of the author. Uh, when you take these amendments, I'd like to be added as a co-author if you uh, would like to add me. And I was going to move the bill, but that's been taken care of. So the motion on the bill would be due pass to appropriations and let me just uh, go over for members of the committee who may not have them. It sets the minimum fine uh, for buyers of prostitution at $250. I think it was felt that this is more likely to actually get collected and the money will be used for services for, um, for the victims uh, of human <clears throat> trafficking. And um, she has taken out the enhancement that was one of the concerns uh, and uh, it, the bill also kind of organizes and clarifies our myriad scattershot laws relating to prostitution. So I think it's a good step forward. Would you like to close? Some well, woman? I, I just respectfully ask for an I vote. I think this is an important step forward to be able to actually address this as a complete issue, and we've um, taken it piece by piece. But thank you for um, two moments, I suppose, <laughs> for both moving it. That, that, that's a good sign. So respectfully ask for your I vote. Did the roll? Hancock? Aye. Hancock, aye. Anderson? Aye. Anderson, aye. Glazer? Aye. Glazer, aye. Leno? Lou, Lou, I, Monning, aye. Monning, I, Stone, Stone, I. Okay, that bill has enough votes. We'll hold the roll open for the absent member. And uh, Assembly Member Irwin. No, Chu. Oh, Chu, sorry. Assembly Member Chu, item 14. Thank you, Madam Chair and Senators. I appreciate your consideration of AB 1848 to address the backlog of sexual assault evidence kits. As all of you in this committee, I'm sure know, uh, it's estimated federally that there are hundreds of thousands of rape kits that have not been tested. In California, we know there's a significant backlog, but we don't know exactly how many kits have been collected uh, or why they have been untested. As a former criminal prosecutor, I do hope that the injustice of the situation is obvious, but it does bear repeating. After a woman has been sexually assaulted, the collection of evidence involves extremely invasive procedures that last for hours. When kits are not tested, without any explanation, it re-traumatizes survivors and allows criminals to roam free. DNA evidence is an incredibly powerful tool to solve crimes. It identifies unknown assailants and confirms known suspects. It affirms a survivor's account and discredits other suspects and connects individuals to other crimes as well as exonerating the innocent. This bill is simple as proposed by a California State Auditor report. It would create transparency by directing law enforcement agencies to use a Department of Justice sexual assault database to track how many evidence kits are collected and the number of kits that have been analyzed by law enforcement agencies. It also directs agencies to report annually their reasons for not testing a kit and requires a report to our legislature to inform policymakers. I want to 
to thank our Attorney General Kamala Harris for being a sponsor of this bill, as well as our co-authors, including Senator Glazer, who sits on this committee. Uh, this is a bill that passed out of the Assembly with unanimous bipartisan support. And with that, I'd like to turn it over to our experts. Okay, I would like to note that we do have support on both sides. Please be brief. We have to recess at noon. Uh, yes, good morning, members of the committee. I, I don't believe that this is a, uh, a committee that needs to be told about uh, the experiences of a sexual assault survivor. Uh, there have been many considerations about the emotional experience that happens both during the perpetration of the crime and its investigation. Uh, and with those emotional anecdotes, the Attorney General believes that we should be uh, creating a data-driven uh, resource for legislating solutions to address uh, the trauma endured by those victims. So we respectfully uh, uh, lend our sponsorship and encourage you to pass this out. Thank you. Others in support? Good morning, Madam Chair and members. My name is Jason Chin. I'm a Deputy District Attorney in Alameda County, and I'm honored to be here to testify in support of this bill. It is vitally important that legislation be passed to track sexual assault kit evidence and encourage law enforcement to be transparent for the reasons for not testing such evidence. Several years ago, I was tasked by our District Attorney, Nancy O'Malley, to investigate the backlog in our county. Initially, I was told by most of our agencies that we had no backlog. After further investigation, we un uncovered nearly 1,900 untested sexual assault kits. At the time, there was no system of accounting for any of these kits or documentation showing reasons why they had not been tested. <clears throat> most of the agencies themselves were unaware of the existence, let alone the number of kits sitting on their evidence and property room shelves. We worked closely with all of the law enforcement agencies in our county to compose a comprehensive accounting of all of the kits, and we devised a strategy to test all of those kits. Getting a full picture of exactly how many kits were in property and evidence rooms sh shelves and documenting reasons why they had not been tested shed light on a problem that had long been hidden. I'm proud to report that we're well on our way to eliminating our backlog of untested kits, and we continue to uncover evidence from those previously untested kits that has led to the prosecution of dangerous sexual predators. With a system in place in our local crime labs to now test every kit within the timelines established in AB 1517, we are ensuring that this valuable evidence is being tested in a timely manner. We strongly believe that this legislation would pave the way for similar results statewide, providing victims of sexual assault with the justice that they deserve. For these reasons, we respectfully request an aye vote for Assembly Bill 1848. Thank you for your time. And Others in support. Madam Chair of the members, Paul Yoder on behalf of the city and county of San Francisco and Mayor Ed Lee in support. Thank you. Chair Christina Romero, Planned Parenthood Affiliates of California in strong support. Don Hoffman with the Los Angeles County District Attorney's Office in support. Others in support? Speakers in opposition to the bill. Thank you, Madam Chair and members. Corey Sozillo on behalf of the California State Sheriff's Association, regrettably here in opposition. Uh, to the bill. We've uh, met with the author and have uh, made clear our concerns that we are not against the testing of rape kits or the reconciliation of where there may or may not be backlogs, uh, but we would note that this bill does impose significant cost burdens on law enforcement agencies surrounding the collection and uh, reporting on untested kits. Uh, we would also note that existing law permits law enforcement to notify a victim when their kit is not going to be tested. Uh, at the victim's request and also requires law enforcement to notify a victim if the case is going to be, if the rape kit is going to be disposed of or not tested. So we think existing law strikes the appropriate balance in the interest of time. We'd ask for your no vote. Thank you. Are there others in opposition? Seeing and hearing none, are there comments or questions? Uh, Senator Glazer and Senator Stone. Thank you, Chair. I just wanted to express my appreciation to the leadership of the author for moving in this direction and also for the great work of the Alameda County District Attorney's Office under Nancy O'Malley. I think uh, they've done uh, great, great work in, in making sure things are uh, working well as they should. And with that, I'd be happy to move the bill at the appropriate time. Thank you. The bill has been moved. Senator Stone. Thank you, Madam Chairwoman. Uh, I also appreciate uh, some of you bringing this forward, but it really highlights a very important issue is, you know, why do we have such a significant backlog of these very important tests where we have these uh, heinous crimes and, and criminals still on the streets, maybe, you know, recidivating and doing more um, sexual crimes? Is it a matter of money? 
in each respective county or is it a matter of personnel? Do we not have enough labs in the state? But I think we need to get to the true root of the problem. Uh, we, you know, reporting is one thing and I certainly understand the Sheriff's Association, she had another report they have to file every year, but I, I wish they didn't have to file the report. I don't wanna see any backlog and I wanna see these perpetrators brought to justice. What can we do to reduce this backlog? Um, if you don't mind me saying so, that should be a policy hearing at some other time. We're dealing with a bill. The bill has support on both sides. I would really suggest we not have a colloquy. If you just a one minute answer would be great. I would just like to understand why there's a, there's a backlog necessitating the bill. I'll try to give a 30 second answer. So this has been a long standing conversation uh, and uh, there are some members of law enforcement that will say that they don't have the budget to do this or uh, that in a number of instances uh, they've already made determinations as to guilt or innocence of parties and thus a kit need not be tested. The reason we've moved forward to this bill is to have transparency around that. If it turns out that there are agencies that don't have the resources, we'll know exactly how many kits are untested so that hopefully we can come back in a few budget and appropriations time period to provide that funding. If it turns out there are really legitimate reasons for why certain kits are not tested, we'll know that as well. But the point of this bill is around transparency so we can get at the very answers uh, that you're looking for. I think we share the identical goals. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, the bill's been moved, Senator Leno. Oh, and Senator Anderson. Thank you, Madam Chair. I have respect for time. I'll be very brief. Just to say I'm in strong support of the bill and if you are making amendments along the way, I would like to be added as a co-author. Happy to do that. Thank you. Senator Anderson. Uh, Senator Leno made my point. In that I'd like to be added as a co-author too if you make an amendment. Great, thank Thompson you. Stone as well, if okay. Thank you. Okay, good. Um, there is a motion, would you like to close? I respectfully ask a quick vote. Please, please read the roll. Hancock? Aye. Hancock, aye. Anderson? Aye. Anderson, aye. Glazer? Aye. Glazer, aye. Leno? Aye. Leno, aye. Lou? Lou, aye, Monning. Aye. Monning, aye, Stone. Aye. Stone, aye. Thank you, Senators. That bill passes. We had a full house.